All right, so very excited to introduce you guys to the man, the myth, the legend, Coach Marty Martins. Uh, tell you guys a little bit about Coach Martins. This is a guy that got me into this industry. Um, took me to my first training clinic when I was 16 years old. Went down to Notre Dame, but uh, I, you know, I envy Coach Martins and what he because he can do something that, that, that I don't think anybody else in the country does better than he does. Um, I think you've been at 26 universities this year, correct, Coach? Yep, universities and, and professional teams. So he's, he he gets to travel around and he gets to he gets to do what we all wish we could do, and he gets to see all these different programs in action. So he runs, he's a director of transitioning at East Kentwood, um, which is the largest high school in, in, in uh, Michigan. It's in the west side, Grand Rapids, Michigan. That was where I went to high school. Um, and and time besides being a you know full time father, husband, coach, he's traveling all over the country. Uh, as well, so he's just uh, extremely committed to it. But this is the guy to talk to about um, what different commonalities programs have that are successful. Uh, some things that he's been to that maybe have surprised him that that weren't so great. Uh, so I'm really just going to give Coach the mic and kind of ask him some questions because I'm just as uh, curious as you guys are to hear uh, all this stuff. But he's kind of been all over, so I'll let him tell you guys a little about that, and then I'm going to ask him some questions about uh, you know what he's seen and. Um, some of the successes and failures that he's been a part of uh, as well. So, uh, Coach, you want to kind of give us a little rundown of, of your, your ventures? Absolutely. Well, first of all, we're uh, East County High School. It's one of the largest high schools in the state of Michigan. Uh, we have a unified strength and conditioning program there where we service around 450 to 600 students a day. And for us, when they come in, it doesn't matter if they're an athlete, not an athlete, guy or girl, we, we train them all the same way. Uh, I've been at it for about 28 years now, and I still have a, a thirst for knowledge, uh, a lifelong learner. I'm never uh, too um, proud, you know, I, I believe that, you know, as, a, as an adult, as a person, we still want to grow in what we're doing. And so I want to continue to get better at my trade. I want to get better personally for myself so that I can bring it back for our students and take them to a whole different level. You know, if we're in a business of doing what's best for kids, then I've got to make sure I'm at the top of my game so we can make sure that they're at the top of their game. And my wife has been extremely supportive. She understands my passion for what I do and lets me travel all around the country. And through those travels over the many years, specifically probably the last 10, I've made some incredible relationships all the way from the West Coast with, you know, out as far west as Stanford, as far east as Maryland and the Baltimore Ravens, as far north as Wisconsin and Iowa, down south to Virginia Tech and uh, North Carolina, North Carolina State, and in a whole lot of schools in between. And, it's just been an incredible journey for me because you develop the relationships with all the different coaches that are out there and you get a chance to share and I think I get a chance to grow but I think I also can help those coaches to grow to see what you know what we do where we are but it gives me a chance when I go to let's say an Akron University for example that I can watch to see what they what they use what style they're using their techniques that are involved um, I come back and we'll bring back whether it's verbiage or a quote and we compare that to see the, the program that we have with our, with our program back at East Kentwood and then we tweak it. You know, on, on Matt's, uh, Coach Killersleeve's uh, second uh, episode of the curriculum, they, uh, one of the coaches that was in here talked about the fact that it's, it's about 10% and you, just, you know, you're, you're trying to, to fix that 10%. You know, it's, it's not, it's not the meat and potatoes that you're changing, but it's, it's, it's the A and the Z. And really that's what I've, I've tried to do my last 10 or 15 years. As we go out, you try to gain new pieces to the puzzle. You're not wholesale subbing everything out, but you're trying to work on the A's and the Z's and, and trying to continue to adjust the program to fit your needs. And so every time I go to a particular place, it's, it's exactly what I look for. It's a, it's a new technique, it's a new drill, it's new verbiage. A lot of times for me it's aff affirmation because I think what we do at East Kentwood High School is very unique. I, you know, I really think we have one of the one of the best high school strength and conditioning programs in the country. Uh, we pride ourselves on that. We have lots of people come and visit us as I go out and visit other colleges. And so, you know, there's no secrets in our business and what we do. I love giving back to them as other people have given to me. And so the journey, the travels have, uh, <laughs> they've been amazing. They've absolutely been amazing, and I look forward to every trip that I take and, and every piece of knowledge that I can bring back because it makes me better at what I do. That's uh, definitely going to be it. So what, I guess, you know, we kind of talked about it earlier uh, before we got rolling here, but um, 
I guess from a, from a, a general before we get super detailed, what are the what are the general things? Let's just say that the top five plays, the plays you've walked into and you've left, and it wasn't a question of is this a successful place or not. From a strength conditioning standpoint, obviously we know there's a million other variables, but what would you say? You know, the number one, two, and three kind of main things that those places, the commonalities that they shared in general, globally, were very similar that you think contributed the most to that strength. Like you say, man, this this staff has got it down. Right. Uh, number one, I would say, would be the staff. I, I think the difference for me from place to place has been the leader, the person that, that's in the forefront of the program, the passion that they have, the grind that they have, the, the juice, the energy that they, that they bring, uh, the knowledge that they have as that leader. Uh, they've empowered the, the members of the staff that are around them. Uh, so it, it's not a sole dictatorship there they come in and yep they're the leader but they give up their duties to a lot of other people so that they that they can get better you know we're only as good as the people around us and those main leaders have surrounded themselves with other individuals that are that are incredible what they do and he's he or she has allowed them to do that so first it's the leader and the people around them I think number two would probably be the facilities you know you go to some places and they have it uh, the administration have bought in and understand what the strength and conditioning coach is all about there. Next to the head coach, um, the strength uh, the strength coach is, is, is the guy, you know, is the man that's, that uh, helps to run that program. You know, the, those athletes spend more time with the strength coach than they do with any position coach or the head coach. And so that's where um, the meat and potatoes are all you know, all, all taken care of. So you would say that's the facilities, that's like more, you notice, is, is the buy-in that comes with it. It's, it's, a rep, it's not the facilities themselves that make the program great. It's the fact that when you see a facility, you know that the administration's bought Absolutely. in, the donors, the head coach, and they haven't just bought into football, but they're buying into strength and conditioning. That's what you... Absolutely, think. right. Yeah, that's what it is, right? It's not, it's not the facility itself. It's the fact that the... I guess I would call them your shareholders. Right. You know, those people that understand the success of what it's going to be. That they know that the that that facility yeah, um, absolutely. is is a huge part of uh, of it all. You know, there can be some great facilities out there. And I've seen great facilities in different places, but you know, it starts with the with the people that are in charge. You know, with with that with the strength coach first and foremost. And then I would say the third thing is the programming. You know, you see lots of different types of program that are out there, but you know, the best ones are are great are great teachers. It's they, their athletes aren't just lifting. They know why they're doing what they're doing. They know how they're supposed to do it. They understand the means to the end, and those teachers have broken it down and, and, and are very progressive in what they're doing. They've got the progressions from easiest to hardest, and they have the different levels of development from. You know, from Devo one or developmental one level um, athletes to the the advanced, which is someone who's been in the program three or four or five years. Would you say the majority of places you've been are progression based, or would you be surprised? I mean, would, would we be surprised if you said, "Hey, you wouldn't believe that this school they don't freaking progress; they just go." Would you? What have you found majority wise in that that standard? The, you know, the elite programs are more progression based. But just like anything else, there's all different levels. Uh, yeah, but, but the best are based upon progressions. I mean, they, it goes from easiest to hardest, from, um, from the very beginner to the, the, to the most experienced. And, and I, love, I love seeing those guys. I love seeing those programs <coughs> where, they're, where they've got their athletes in there and, they, and they've, they're at different levels. And yet they're able to manage it, a room of you know, 30 or 40 um, young people in there that are training. And they've got them all at their individual you know, uh, level of training. All right. This might not be a politically correct question, but we're not very politically correct guys. So. <laughs> um, all right, what, and it's kind of, I mean, it's a very, obviously a very similar question. I'm sure you'll have similar answers, but out of every place you've been over the last 10 years, what are the three places or coaches that have stuck out to you the most and why? Wow, boy, the three best, that's a, and in no particular order. No particular just, order. Yeah. yeah, you know, that's a fair question. That's tough because I've, boy, 
I've, been, I've, I've uh, met some great ones. There are some great people in this industry that are really, really good at what they do. Um, so if some of you out there see us and you're not the top three, you really are in the top three. It's hard for me to narrow down. Uh, <laughs> it is, but you asked. I would say Chris Doyle is, is amazing um, up in Iowa. I love his style. Um, he is very progression-based. He's probably the veteran. So if you look at maybe the, the best veteran out there, you guys would love just to watch him train and do what he does with his athletes. And everything that I talked about, he, he does those things. Um, how is he as a leader? What's his leadership style? At least when you got to kind of see him, how is he, how is he interact with the he, players? Oh, he's great. He empowers. He loves those guys. Um, he empowers his coaches. Um, he is he's the... Um, He's the heart and soul of, of the whole program, and but he's got a great staff, and they do an amazing job. There's lots of great staffs like that, but Chris is Chris Doyle, as far as the veteran, you know, probably one of the one of the up and coming young guys that I've seen is D'Antonio Burnett at North Carolina State. You know, in terms of a of a of a new strength coach at opposite ends of the spectrum from a veteran uh, to somebody um, at the beginning phase, uh, he's he's very much like. Uh, Coach Doyle, um, and then somebody in the middle, the middle of the pack who's got experience would probably be like a Rick Court at Maryland. Um, all three of those guys are all very similar, yet all very different, but yeah. incredible at their job. And there's so many good ones. I mean, you know, Eric Kellen up at Wisconsin, and Ross Kalaji, and um, Dan Nickel out at Minnesota. Trying to go through all my guys because there are so many. There are so many good ones. Um, uh, obviously, Mickey Moratti at, at Ohio State, Ken Manny at Michigan State. Yeah, they do an all right job. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're <laughs> yeah, Co yeah. Coach Mick is he's amazing too. He's a veteran guy too. There's just there's just so many. There's so many of them out there. Um, they just do a great job with what they do. But you know, the top three from a veteran guy to a beginning to somewhere in between those. They're all, they're all fun to go to. I could I could go watch any of those guys, day after day after day. And obviously, you know, those of you that are watching the curriculum right now, uh, Coach Gildersleeve is he's the up and coming guy. He's one of the, the guys that's going to be like a, a Chris Doyle. He's going to be like a Mickey Moriarty and Eric Kellen. Um, so if you get a chance, I would continue to I'd continue to follow these these YouTubes and these podcasts as he has them because you're going to learn a lot because he's going to be the next. He's going to be the guy that somebody's talking about on a YouTube five or ten years down the road about who's the top three that they've seen in their travels. That means a lot, Coach. I appreciate that. Um, this is and this is kind of a little bit off off where we're just talking about. But so you mentioned uh, Moriarty and at mine. You've been down. You've been, you've seen Coach Moffat down at LSU, right? I've not. Have not made it. Oh, there you were going to go down once, right? I've yeah, I've tried to get down. There's a couple of places you know that I haven't gotten to yet that uh, I would like to get down. Uh, Coach Moffat would be. Uh, one coach Batson at Clemson. I've heard a lot of great things. I've been yeah. in communication with him, and you know Nate Peoples. If you don't know him, he's an assistant at Texas. He's a oh, he's at Texas now. He's right. at Texas. He's awesome. He was at Mississippi State. Um, yeah, I've heard really. Well, I've, I've talked to uh, what's his name, Yancey. Uh, just talked to him on the phone a few times. He seems really good, and I've had a couple of his transfers here that spoke very highly of him too. So I heard Yancey's really good. Um, but so. But the unique thing to me about like Marathi and, and Moffitt, you know, like their coaching trees are insane. And obviously they've been in it forever. But like, you know, when one of those Ohio State coaches leave, it's not even a question. They're bringing one of those Ohio State dudes with them. Yeah. And and Moffitt was the same way. I mean, when I was down at LSU, which was six years ago now, um, he had like ten head strength coaches out there that down there. What, That's from a great. standpoint, did you get a chance to really see or make an opinion on? what he does with his staff? Uh, is, is it just he just hires really good dudes? Is it the developmental process as a coach? You speak about empowering a little bit. What, what do you think is leads to that success of having so many freaking coaches out there? Uh, that's great, because that's what you're doing, I think, is, is separating you. What you're doing is just what they're doing. Um, you know, there are people out there watching this, and they're trying to say, where, where would I want to go get an internship? I'd want to be at the University of Akron. Because what you're doing, coach, is uh, is, is very similar to what they do okay. at, the, at these other places. They are, they're training their young people to be head coaches. They're preparing them like a head coach. And 
it's it's through their curriculum it's and it's it's through their um, their meetings that they have their pre meetings their post meetings all of the preparation that they put in um, is what makes them it was what, what makes them so different so what you're doing not everybody does the great ones are doing it and they are they're they're leading the pack the people that go to Ohio State to go to Iowa that that go to Maryland that, that are going to these places are they're getting the jobs because they're they are giving their interns an, an opportunity that, uh, that others aren't getting along the way. So you're you're way ahead of the curve for what everybody else is doing. And so you young people that are that are here are getting a great opportunity. Um, and uh, be thankful that you are where you are. So uh, I would have loved to have an opportunity like this, you know, as I started started out. But I but I got a great job, you know, being doing what I do as a as a high school strength coach full time is very unique. In the Midwest, and uh, I got a good gig. Yeah, I do. I have well, a great. You built it from nothing too. I mean, it was. It's awesome. I mean, it is. I, I there's not many days I that I have a bad day at work. I mean, there's a couple times you get some knuckleheads in there that test you, but then, you know, you get those emails and those letters about how you've changed their lives, and sometimes they don't get it until they've gone. They don't understand that the tough love, the, the fact that uh, you know I, I read your, uh, your, your uh, plaque this morning, and his plaque says. It's tough with my with my bad eyes. But it says players don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, and and that that's that's a huge huge motto to live by. And I don't I think kids they don't understand. I mean they they know you care about them, but it's it's once they they've left and they come back, they really appreciate the tough love that you that you've given them. And, and in this day and age, it's so it's so easy to enable young people and. That's not what I am. I'm not an enabler. Uh, I'm, I'm, I try to be firm, fair, and consistent in what I do and what I've done. And I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you praise, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna coach you with enthusiasm. Yeah. And kids need that, and I, they appreciate it later on. They appreciate that tough love as they as they get a bit, little bit older. But it's a great journey. I, I you know, I've, I still got a lot of kick in me. You know, 50 years old, and uh, I look forward to the. To the places that I go and the relationships that you're going to meet and the, and the information that, you, that you're going to learn because it helps me to grow and then I can bring it back and help my staff grow and then help our students to grow and you can take them to levels that they never ever thought that they could, they could achieve and I'm one of those guys that I never claim to know everything there is to know about strength and conditioning I don't know that we can it's such a it's such a ginormous field yeah. that as soon as you do that you've uh, you shortchanged everyone around you that's what I look forward to. I look forward to getting out there and, and learning more. I still have this huge thirst for knowledge. I want to be the best, knowing that I'll never be the best, but I want to work doggone hard at making sure that I'm giving everything I can to try and get there. You uh, you talked about enabling, and it's funny, we were talking about yesterday, and it's, it's something I struggle with because I want to give these guys the best opportunity to be successful. So you want to put them in, in those scenarios to be successful, but you're also like, what do we give them versus making them earn? And I mean, we, we were talking about we were something yesterday in our weight gain guys. So you know, I mean, we freaking I mean, these guys spend an hour a day making shakes for our weight gain guys. You know, we don't have a nutrition. We are the nutrition department, right. so we don't have someone else doing that. Um, you know, Sophia makes peanut butter and jelly sandwich for these guys. Spends half an hour, quarter of minutes doing that every morning. And uh, we give them snacks at practice. We give them you know two shakes a day. We track every meal they eat. We log them. Um, and so I'm like, you know, are we holding these guys' hands too much? Yesterday, one of the players looked at uh, one, I can't one of these guys and said, hey, uh, next time you bring my peanut butter and jelly sandwich out, can you put less peanut butter and more jelly on it? And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm not, I mean, as soon as they told him, are you fucking kidding me? Like, I mean, so it's, uh, and I, it's I, I don't have the answer. I'm almost asking in anyone's opinion, but it's, we're sitting here talking. We're like, at what point do you, you know, are you are you enabling them? Are you holding their hands? Or is it when it's say, you know, hey, Marty Martin, you need to gain 10 pounds. Go figure it out. There's there's obviously that where I'm not helping you at all, or am I helping you too much by saying, okay, Marty, here's your first shake, here's your second shake, here's your snack, we're going to eat every meal with you. Um, and it's like, you know, we're trying to put them in a position to be successful, but are we giving them a realistic shot at life to where, you know, when a boss tells you to do something, he ain't gonna, well, when I give these guys a task, I don't say, okay, now listen, you're gonna do it this way and this way, and I'll come check in on you in about five minutes. Um, are we setting them up for failure by doing those kind of things? And that's something I struggle with a lot. Yeah, you know, I would look at that and say, 
I don't know that that's enabling. I think like, if you look at nutrition, that is, that's an area where I have fallen short in my, in my role as a leader. And I, I think that's an area where people are, are deficit at that. I mean, we, we, they don't know how to eat right. 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 We're such a Absolutely. fast paced society, me included, especially in my travels, that it, uh, it's easy to, to eat something eat something bad. So I looked at what you're doing with them nutrition-wise. If you didn't do it for them right now, and it's fast-paced there with all of their practices and their school and their, all the commitments that they have, they're not going to eat. And I don't know. I, don't, I guess I wouldn't see the, the nutrition aspect as enabling. Now, it's a little bit much about the peanut butter. You know, t- you know, and that's probably the conversation we need to have. But yeah, um, that's what we have as an individual. You know? Yeah, but I don't, I, don't, I don't think that's enabling. I mean, I, kids, 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 people, society, we're not good at nutrition. Yeah. And so if you didn't do it, they're not going to get the gains because they're not going to know how to do it. They're not going to have the tools. They're not going to have the resources. You know, you've got the, you, with your hard work and effort, what you've done with your nutrition bar, if you didn't do that, just think where your players wouldn't be. Think yeah. where, where they are now because of what you, what you did. Now you can say, well, did I enable them by doing that? Should we just let them go out and learn to eat on their own? Then you would shortchange your program. Right. No and, and you've taken your program to a whole different level by doing that. And, and I think you try to teach them you know, like, you know, we talked about what we're doing with our digital media project at school. You know, again, we've got great stakeholders. Our administration, our principal, Omar Bakri, has been amazing since he took over. And uh, I told him just what you were talking about nutrition. I said, I've shortchanged our kids for 18 years here because we're so caught up in, in the strength, conditioning, the agility portion of it that we've, we haven't done a good enough educational piece, you know, with the classroom. And so we have a 655 inch televisions coming in within the next week and a HDMI switcher, Roku's, Apple TVs, and we have this whole project that's gonna be designed to educate our young people on areas that we're not able to, to get to in a classroom. You know, so we'll talk, we'll have slides that run with eating and sleeping and hydration and we'll, we'll, we'll have you know leadership or whatever little subcategories that we think we're deficient in going to try to get information to them that way because we're so we're so technology driven so we're going to use technology as, as a way to drive home some pieces that i haven't been that i haven't been good at make sure you email me too because we have all that we have all those slides already so i can suggest to you guys at least an idea oh that's yeah we have we have hydration alcohol sleep cars supplements i mean we have it all coach green can email to you too yeah. that stuff up. and that's good stuff and i don't think that's enabling i think that's i just think those areas that we're, de- we're deficient in. And so that's a way that we can start to teach them, hoping that when they leave, we've given them a better understanding of some of the, some of the things that they haven't been taught along the way. Yeah, sure. right, right now, it's just a fast-paced business that you're in uh, with athletes, and nutrition is an area that would suffer if you didn't do what you did. Yeah, I think it's just, yeah, I, I it's just finding that fine line of, of I, just, I, mean, I just hate, I hate when guys complain about having to take their green grass superfood like if i was able if if, uh, if my coach in college told me if i ate a, a six pack of dog shit every day and it would make sure we won the national championship i wouldn't even have freaking thought about it or these guys will go out to the freaking bar and rip shots of 151 but they bitch about taking a shot of, of green grass superfood um and all we're trying to do is make them better you know what i mean so just so I mean, that, that's that's a probably a personal pet peeve of mine but just always trying to find that fine line of not enabling, uh, but also giving them knowledge and then giving them the resources, which we freaking do here. You do. We give them those things. So they, they don't have this at every mid major. No. I've been to them. They don't have what you what you have. They don't have it at other mid major. You know, and I think it's one of those things too. It's like we talk about the tough love that you give. Kids get it later. What you're doing nutritionally, they'll get it later. They'll look back and go, man. When we were at Akron and, and Coach Sleeve had these things for us, I wish I had that again. When no. former players come back, like the ones that were here before I took over, right. they're like, they used to freaking get, you know, they used to, to get a, a Powerade tub and they'd take muscle milk canister and dump it in there and they would get, like, you know, a little Gatorade cup of muscle milk and that would be the only supplements they would get all day. You know, so compared to what, yeah, I mean, you're, I couldn't agree more. It's, it's just, I think it's all perspective, as anything is. You yeah. Know? You know, I get it. You know, you know, you're going back. There's a couple of guys I want to make sure I. I'd be remiss if that's the right word. Yeah, Coach, nice. Nice verbiage. Did, I, did, nice. I, did, I, did nice. I sound intelligent on that one? Yeah. 
Um, there's a couple other strength coaches along the way. I gotta make sure I give them shouts out because they've been good to me. Coach Caden down in Indiana and Jonas and Terran out of North Carolina. Um, Matt Bayless at Notre Dame. What's Bay Bayless his Olympic sports? No, he's football. Oh, he's a new guy. He he's replaced football, uh, yeah. Longo, right? Yeah, really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. High intensity, lots of juice, lots of energy. Is he a younger guy? Program. Great guy. Younger guy? Uh, uh, somewhere between you and me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like 17. Yes, there you go. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, uh, Coach Warner at Virginia Tech. Uh, there's so many good ones. Yeah. There, I mean, there's so many. And they're, and they're great. They're great, great guys. Great guys. You know, another great thing, Matt, is um, doing what I do, which has been fun, is um, when you get a chance to work with young people, you know, you change their lives, you know, physically, mentally, spiritually, socially. Um, the relationships you develop within the high school, not even outside, of, outside, I talk about the relationships I've built with the strength coaches and the coaches across the country, but you know, the relationships we build with young people at our own schools, and then you get a chance to look back and see how they've grown and the impact that you had. I, I look at, and I'm so proud of you for uh, where you are and what you've done and, and where you're gonna go. And to know that maybe I had a, a, a small a small hand in that. Absolutely. And, and uh, there's some other students that I've got like that are out there and they've, they've started that journey or they're into that journey. And so that's, that's the rewarding part of why we do what we do. Yeah, I get I get fired up all the time thinking about what I do and how lucky I am to do it, and uh, it's a great field. You you young people that are here right now have a great opportunity to to change lives, and as you're changing lives, you don't know you don't know how you impact them because sometimes they might ever ever come back to you. So the impact you're having now, you don't even understand. And just know that that you're doing it. It's, it's a great thing. Couldn't agree more. All right, coach, let's flip the script. Uh oh. Now let's go. And now we talked about what you found at the most successful programs. You talked about their three traits empowerment, with, you know, it comes down to the leader, the facilities, the programming. What are the, and maybe these are not the, you know, the same, but the opposite of reverse role, but what are the, the plays you've walked into and you've expected? You know, all the bells and whistles, great leadership, great coaching. And it just didn't quite click. What was, what are the, the things that you noticed that this, it just seems to be missing this piece, and that piece is not allowing the strengths to have to be successful. Um, you know, and, and kind of the, the same question: What are maybe the, the three traits that you've seen that, that that don't necessarily work or haven't worked as well as these other places you talked about? You know, it is. And I haven't seen many of those because there are some great ones out there. Yeah. There are some. There's some great ones, and everyone's different. The ones where I've walked in or I've, or I've left or, or you're in there a short amount of time, one, again, it's leadership. You know, it's, it's a lack of leadership. And maybe more than that, it's, it's a lack of a vision. You know, it's, in, what, in what sense? What, what, what kind of vision? Program vision? I would vision. say it's program vision. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. It's more of a program vision. You can, it's, it's kind of hit or miss. You know, when you sit down, because it's always fun to sit like we're doing here. You sit afterwards at, at, at a lot of the good ones. And uh, you'll have a little powwow, and you realize that if you started to have a powwow, that there's no there's no sense of direction for where they're going. So it's really a, it's really a program thing. Um, the other piece hey, would there. be uh, the facilities. You walk in and go, holy cow! You know what? Well, you know we've had kids at our school that are getting recruited, and they go off and they come back and say, Coach Martins, I'm not gonna go to this particular school. And I'll say, well, why is that? Like, well, because their facilities aren't as nice as we got a great facility. I mean it's it's one of the it's one of the I don't know if you'll on this somehow we can post a couple of pictures or whatever or you know we can get information so you can see, I've got a website that we have but uh, we have an incredible facility at, for high school, nineteen power racks, ten dough units, it's off the charts and we're uh, and we're public school, we represent like 66 countries. It's the real world, it's awesome. Great teachers, great students, and we have great facilities. Um, but the facilities, you know, they go in there and it's, I was just at a facility last week and I was, I, I, it was hard for me to believe that it was, a, it was a division one. 
facility. So, and um, once again, like I mean, I just from a facility standpoint, yeah, I I, I think it's a coach can a, a great strength coach can make anything you can. with anything. Yeah, but I think what you're what you're, what you're more what you're saying is there's just there's clearly no support of the program. Correct. You're from, right from the from the uppers, and that that's what you're saying. You kind of notice is right. Whether it's whether it's clearly, I mean, Coach Bout. I mean, this obviously this isn't Alabama what we have here, but the support that Coach Bout has given me with the supplements whenever we, if we, I mean, obviously you know I can't go out and buy 50 Tendo units whenever I want, but you know if I go up and say, hey, Coach, you know we need this to be successful, he finds a way to get the money to get it done, um, and I think that's evident to our players, to my staff, you know they and, and even me, how much easier that makes about my job knowing that my head coach supports me. Um, I think that's that's probably. Well, well, that's more what you're saying as far as the facilities. Yeah, right, right, right. Because, right, the facility doesn't make the program right. by any means, right? Because there's, right, exactly. I mean, it's, it goes to the, I think, it's, again, it goes back to what we talked about. It goes back to the leader and their philosophy and their vision for what they have. And you can make anything work. I mean, you remember the days when we were in our 1,000-square-foot weight room and we had 74 people. But we were grinding. And we, got a, we, got a, we got a boat load done, you know, and that – that facility that we have and now we have a Taj Mahal but we're still we've taken it to another level so right it's not the facility but it's the it's the support from the leaders above I mean you, know? you make it happen I mean, coach coach green this summer we you know we needed sleds and you know it wasn't our budget to get new sleds so we went coach green went to a junkyard got freaking old tires you know bought some chains hooked the chain up and that's what we pulled this summer and they worked out freaking great you know we we uh we were doing some research in the winter on on shoulder strength we had a couple shoulder injuries we want to try to get better at that so uh, there's a strong correlation of grip strength and shoulder strength that they, they found, um, and that's mainly at Ohio State with what they're seeing. So uh, we can't afford all those grenade pull down and you know the, the fat bars that's not in our budget. So one of our actual former interns, you talk about empowering people, it was a freaking intern that brought the idea to the table, and I said, show me the research, bring me the stuff, show me how we can figure it out, and he did a great job of it. And we went and got softballs. And you know, screwed screwed uh, different variations of things, you know, different grips, med balls, and all of a sudden we have a whole new grip training program. Um, Can I steal that? Yeah, because you know we're in, we yeah we do grip strength every yeah. day. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, we did it for how much did that end up costing us? Fifty bucks. Fifty dollars. Fifty bucks to get a whole new grip training program, um, and it's just small things we added to. You know, we we do scat pull parts anyway, so now we just do softball attached scat pull parts or Y presses or back wings oh, or whatever it be, so yeah. we just incorporate all our grip training into what we're already doing, you know, instead of regular curls, we do fat bar curls, instead of regular pull-ups, we do towel pull-ups, or instead of inverted rows, we'll do soft ball inverted rows, and they're freaking brutal, but, um, so I think, yeah, I mean, just, just being able to, being creative like that stuff is, is huge, too, that's kind of off topic, but, uh, worth mentioning, right, Coach Green? Yeah. No, no, you're right, you're right, and I, I think, like, just like we're doing right now, you just talked about how you're, the tweaks you made, that's why I do what I do. When you go, you see somebody who's been creative, like you guys were, you multitask, you're able to get more bang for your buck and accomplish two different things while doing one exercise. And so that's why you go out and, you know, it's like professional development for me every single time I go somewhere. And so even though we're sitting around having a round table discussion, a little bit that you talked about, I got your vision, I can picture exactly what it is you're doing and go, okay. I can add that now because we already do grip strength every single day. You know, we work. You know, if you look at our program, we're you know, head to toe, anterior chain, posterior chain, fast twitch, slow twitch, triple extension, velocity based training, concussion reduction, ACL reduction. I mean, we I think we have a, a really complete program that most colleges don't have. And right. so now you're going, how can I be more efficient, more effective, more time on task? But now I can do my grip strength along with posterior chain. Um, That's good stuff. Yeah, for sure. So, when I was there, obviously, you know, we, we, I wouldn't say it was a storage closet, but it was a little bit bigger than the storage closet, and that's where we trained. Um, and obviously, you had a massive vision of what you wanted to do. Um, and you still, I mean, every time I come back, there's something, there's no, some new piece of equipment. You've redone this, you've redone that, you're constantly getting the, the facility better and better. What, what has that process been like? You know, how, how are you, because there's so many coaches out there that, that, one of their main struggles is getting support, getting donors, getting money, or, or explaining why it's essential to have it. So what would you say has allowed you to be so successful in completely changing that and, and now having one of the best weight rooms for high school in the entire country? Um, I 
think first and foremost probably was my passion. I think it, it, I think it was the passion, the vision, the philosophy um, that you had. I think that's what has started. With that, it has to come from, I, I go back to the word shareholders. It has to come for, from your, your leaders. And, but and even though shareholders are different, it's, it's our administrators from the very top, it's your coaches, it's your parents, and it's the, it's the athletes, the students themselves. So you've got to get buy-in from, from those shareholders. Those people have to have big buy-in in order for it to be successful. Because if you don't, it's not going to go anywhere. Ultimately, the money aspect of it comes from, from the administration. They've seen how we've grown the program. Our program next to um, our band is the biggest elective in, in the school. It might even be bigger than our, than our band. Our band's you know, 350, 400 strong um, as far as the class goes. But the one thing that I go, and that went to our athletic director, Blaine Brummels, I go to him every year and he knows I'm gonna come in with a, a substantial request for equipment. He knows it's not for me, he knows it's for our students, he knows it's to take them to a whole other level, but I never go there and ask him without giving something back in return. So one of the things I would in, in, encourage the people listening is that you've gotta find a way that you're giving back. So we do, we do lift-a-thons, and our lift-a-thon is called Build Your Apparel. We do something called Build Your Apparel. I'm always trying to find grants Trying to find free money. There's free money out there. You just got to search for it. You know, you got to dig for it. So there's a way to get people to give you money. That way. You got to be able to search out and ask for donors. You know your people in your community that will give back to you. And we've had a couple of different people that have, been, that have been gracious to us. And you don't hit them up very often. You don't go every once in a while. Our student council has been amazing. You know, about every three years we'll go and student council understands what we do and how we, we change the culture of our school. And, and, um, there's another thing that we do. I'm, I'm missing one. It'll come back to me. But I think you continue to. to oh, and we do. Um, we have a um, a uh, milk machine. We have a milk machine outside of our weight room. We have a, a Nesquik milk machine, and uh, we make like a quarter, 25 cents on every milk. So the kids have a chocolate milk. You know, chocolate milk does the body good. You see in the commercial. We have chocolate milk right outside of our weight room. So it's a win-win. Our kids get a post-workout drink right when they get done, and we make 20 cents. So we're making a little bit, so when we go and ask administration for money, we're not asking something without giving something back in return. They know that we've done, that we've done our fair share. And, uh, it's helped us to, to be able to continue to grow and, and, and to do things along the way. But it's a uh, super great journey. And uh, I, I can't wait for our next adventure this year. We just got, we added a second pit shark which has been which has been good for us and we really use that more for developmental purposes um, so we have a, a progression program that we follow and so the, the pitch arc is a big part of that since we've had the second one student council just donated that to us hadn't been in three years so we're good yeah all right what uh so i can stop asking them the question what do you guys have interns Guys, I mean, what? Like I said, this is a definitely a great guy to ask questions to. So, what else we got? How much of changing culture in the weight room has reflected across to other sports? Great, that's a great question. Nice job, TJ. That's a good one, really good one, and I think that's huge. Again, like I said, we have a unified program. To me, it doesn't matter if you're an athlete or not an athlete. It doesn't matter if you're a guy or a girl. We're going to train you all the same way. You know, that's one thing I've learned across as I as I traveled. All the colleges, uh, all the athletes at the different levels and different sports, they're all getting trained the same way. They are. They're training them the same way we're the same. You're training a football player the same way you're training a basketball player, the way you're training a golfer, the way you're training a, you know, a, uh, you know, a baseball player. The difference is is the programming. When when are they? When are their their um, their uh, cycles? You know, that, then that's varied from season to season. But we're training athletes. And uh, the thing that happens with us when you come in, knowing the fact that, to me, it doesn't matter who you are or where you come from or whether you play a sport or you don't play a sport, we've, uh, we've all grown together. And it's, it's in terms of athletic uh, pieces of it, you, you've had taken some kids that in a big school like that might not ever know each other, will get a chance to come in and work and grow and sweat together 
and now they become friends and develop relationships like they've never had before. And so now I'm gonna go watch the girls volleyball team. I'm gonna go watch a golf match. I'm gonna go watch a tennis match. So we've, we've, we've brought a bunch of kids together from a lot of different cultures, a lot of different interests, and then gave them some commonality within, within the weight room, developed a, a brothership, a sistership, just friendship in general. And now we've, we've gone out and supported each other and all of our different, and, and even in the, uh, not just the athletic realm, but in the arts, you know, go and watch them, uh, uh, watch them sing or, or dance or um, do some sort of some sort of play or play in the band. So that's that part I think has been huge. Yeah, and sometimes gets missed. Couldn't agree more. That's awesome too, just for the diversity that's in that school to get everyone to support everybody is because that school could be super clicky if you didn't have that. So. Yeah. The impact that probably that impact probably is even more sufficient than you even think it is. What else we got, guys? We've been talking about you know different coaches and different programs around the country. What makes what you do and how you do it different from everybody else? Uh, college wise or high school wise? Both. Just in general. Just, just in general. Wow. Like how 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 do you, how do you go about empowering your staff? How, uh, the different type of intensity that you bring with different sports and coaching all the athletes at that big school. Like how do you, what do you do differently from somebody else? Accountability, I would say the first thing that comes to my head. He's sorry to take no, this go ahead. It's just, yeah, it's, when you go back and watch him coach, that scenario is very difficult to coach in because you have, you're not just coaching football players, you're coaching football players and volleyball players and wrestlers and then some of your average Joe Jims too. And he has a way of holding each and every one of them accountable at the same standard which is incredible to see. Um, it's probably, it's, I mean, I couldn't imagine doing it, which is, is why it's, it's probably the biggest thing I envy about you, but everybody everybody knows what the standard is, which, I mean, I'm, I'm not necessarily always there to see you kind of lay that standard, but it's just, it's known, everyone knows what's acceptable, what's not acceptable, and then you have a great way of holding accountable to it, which I don't know if I've seen anybody do it better than he does it with that. When I go back and watch, it's just everybody, it's just, it's clockwork, everybody is accountable. They don't step out of line because they know the standard. They know the repercussions. Um, it's pretty impressive to see. I mean, that's at least from my from my my standpoint. Thank you. Uh, I mean, <laughs> <I feel good. laughs> yeah, and it's not easy to do. You yeah. know, um, like I said, we go back to in this day and age. It's it's easy to enable. It's hard to hold people accountable. You know, it's if you want to call it the uh, lack of a better term, the bad cop. You know, you got a good cop, bad cop, and. I just want kids to be successful, and we we have to we have to give them guidelines and parameters and hold them to it. You know, people say to me, I've heard them say before, "Coach, you got favorites." I say, "Absolutely. You work hard. You follow directions. You're respectful. You're gonna be my favorite. If you if you if you can't do some simple things like that, then you're gonna be held accountable for it." You know, and I kind of call that coaching with enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. um, but I always tell them too, because we get a big room, we'll have 70, 74, 75 people in there an hour with another teacher, Sherry Hoving, does a great job, uh, one of my assistants. And uh, you got the music going, you know how it is, and the, and the, and the metal's clanging, and you know, you've got uh, some kids down at the far end. And I said, don't interpret me raising my voice as a sign of emotion. You know, it's not emotional. Although sometimes, I do get emotional, sometimes that, I mean, that, that happens, but, uh, you know, you bring the juice, you bring the energy. And uh, the thing, going back to it, besides what Matt or Coach Gildersley talked about, is the fact that I think we're extremely organized. Um, I think we're efficient, effective in what we do. Uh, we, we have a, a, a clear plan, a vision of what it is we're trying to get accomplished. We have programming. And um, it's, uh, it's definitely, it, it's all led by the teacher up front, you know, so we, we're taking our kids through every single thing that we do and the amount of work that we get done in 40 to 45 minutes is, is incredible. And so as battle rap sometimes we give kids about where they are in 2017, to sit back sometimes when we get visitors come in, and we'll, we'll, we'll get them going, we'll take them through our primers or our prehab, and then you kind of sit back and you watch, you get 75 kids in a weight room in an open environment like this and they're getting after it and they're sweating and the metal is clanging 
and you got the smell in the air and they're on task and they're doing what they're supposed to do, you're like, this is good. This is good. This is good stuff. And that, that gets you going. That gets your juices going. But I don't think we can do it if we weren't so organized the way we are. And, uh, you know, the methods and the madness that we have and the equipment that we have and the way we've organized each of our stations. Because we don't move. We do. We built the stations from the inside out <clears throat> so we don't have to move. Everything we do is right at hand. And so it's, it, it's fun. It's fun to sit back and watch um, sometimes because when, when we don't leave, we'll sit back and it's like, good stuff all right coach well as we kind of wrap this up um just your biggest piece of advice for everybody watching and obviously all of us right here if there's just kind of one thing you could leave everybody with maybe the biggest thing you've learned or as we continue to learn and come up with this what's, what's a, a big piece of advice you can give us uh never too old to learn that's first and foremost you got to grow you got to keep growing you know if you're not learning you're dying i think they say so you've got to you got to keep growing. You got to you got to keep trying to get better at your trade because there's so much out there to learn. Um, and I've had a chance to to learn from some great ones. You know, I went down to you know like down in Alabama with Scott Carter. There's, there's always something to be learned at every single level. Um, second part, I would say, when you do it, you got to bring your juice. You got to bring the energy. You got to bring the passion. As I've gone out and, and spoke and done clinics at places, I've spoken and done a clinic uh, within our conference. And I remember asking an athletic director, I said, it's okay if I go into this clinic for an interconference school? And he's like, and he's, he said, yeah. And I said, well, why, why are you comfortable with that? And he said, well, nobody, there's not a, they don't have another Marty Martins there. You know, you can go give them all the information they want. But unless that person brings the energy and brings the juice, it's not going to matter anyway. So wherever you do, wherever you guys end up, bring your energy, bring your juice, um, because the kids are going to they're going to replicate the leader, and uh, so bring it each time you're there because they demand the best, and in order for that to happen, you got you got to give it to them. Coach, thank you so much. And, and for those of you, I don't think I even said this yet. Coach, Coach drove six hours down here last night just to come shoot an episode. So another example of his uh, relentless commitment to uh, to me um, and this this industry. And then that's just to come down, have a couple beers, talk some shop, and shoot an episode. We don't even have a training group for him to watch today. Um, so I, I can't say how much I, I appreciate you, Coach. And uh, Coach Martin has definitely directed the you know the path. He's a, he's the first influence I had in this industry. So. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Uh, Coach, where can they contact you if anybody has any questions for you? Um, my email is marty.martins at kentwoodps.org. And it's M-A-R-T-Y dot martins, M-A-R-T-E-N-S at kentwoodps.org. Otherwise, I'll link it in the show notes. Yeah, you, you, they can link it to you and yeah. they can get the information. You get my cell phone. And, uh, we got a website we're working on. Nice. Pretty good. All right, cousin. Thank you so much, and uh, having me. I appreciate it. We'll see you guys. The secret side of me, I never let you see. I keep it caged, but I can't control it. So stay away from me. The beast is ugly. I feel the rage.